Have you ever wondered why uh, when you get ready to watch certain things or you listen to certain things, um, it seems as if the phone will trip on you or your computer will shut down? Now, sometimes we like to think that's because of the alphabet boys, the ever-present, all-seeing eye. But in reality, it's a lot simpler than that. It's all based off of Ephesians 2 and 2, which describes a name for the adversary that's not often used, and that is the spirit of the power of the air. So we're going to talk a little bit about how that spirit operates, and you're going to enjoy this one. So just bear with me, and we will return to MK Ultra. We have uh, three more parts to that, uh, MK Ultra in the hood, G's and Freaks. But for now, let's talk a little bit about technology and technology. Now, Detroit is where um, I'm born and raised, and the there's a statue in downtown Detroit, right in the heart of downtown Detroit, across the street from Hart Plaza, as a matter of fact, and um, got a corner to the Renaissance Building, which is now called the GM Building, Grand Master Mason Building. Uh, there is a statue, and when the Tigers are doing well, they throw a Tigers jersey on it, or when the Red Wings are doing well, then they put the Red Wing jersey on it. And it's called the Spirit of Detroit. Well, the Spirit of Detroit is used for Detroit, Michigan, because Detroit, Michigan is a city that stands for something in America. Um, the, all of the major cities have a Masonic job, if you will, have a secret society um, uh, a secret society goal that each major city is to help push. All a part, of course, of what they call the great work, their, their agenda as a whole. But each city has its own little part of that agenda that it's supposed to supply. <clears throat> and the part that Detroit was supposed to supply is industry. And industry is represented, uh, you know, by the cars that were made there during the war. The uh, the the, the uh, old folks would always talk about how they converted the factories there in Detroit uh, from building cars into building tanks. And then you have the RoboCop movie, which is all about a man and technology being merged together, uh, so, so somewhat of a transhumanist movie, but uh, or, or a movie that promotes the, the singularity. But let's look a little bit deeper into this. It's all about the fallen angels who really brought us technology. So once I lay down the foundation, we're just going to read through this page. It's one page, so we should have plenty of time to get through this. And I wanted to knock all of these side subjects out the box so we could spend the balance of our time on MK Ultra uh, in the hood because that's a very deep subject with a lot of, lot of layers to that onion. And uh, so do be confident in that we shall return. The papers are already written up. Um, I'm just uh, trying to follow the spirit a little bit here. So let's follow the spirit. Now, the word inspiration, inspiration is how we say it. Remember, it's the dictionary that controls your diction and the way you say words um, has a lot to do with the meaning of the word, the way that it's used, but, but more importantly, with the way that it cuts through the air and causes the spirit realm to operate, the way that you understand it. The fact that you say coincidence as opposed to coincidence makes you think about the word differently. See? So we say inspiration instead of inspiration. Inspire <clears throat> is the root word of spirit. Uh, inspiration, right inside of the word, you see the spur. The same spur is in spirit. And that note, notates uh, to us that inspiration actually comes by spirit. And the symbol of the spirit of Detroit is really a symbol for Prometheus, who is nothing but an allegory or metaphor, a disguise for Lucifer. <clears throat> and Lucifer indeed blinded us all with science. The fallen angels came down and blinded us with science. Uh, and so, so Detroit had to be somewhat of a, a of a sacrifice. I did a whole video on that, so we're not going to go back down through that right here. But because the old way, the old way of inspiration, still is all it's still by spirit, but the old way of inspiration was to create the machines uh, of industry that man would use his his physical power, his his strength, his backbone, his manpower, in order to operate these machines. 
And the new way will be to replace man with the machines that he once operated. And so Detroit had to be a symbolic sacrifice for the the uh, passing away of the old and a bringing in of the new. So <clears throat> also you find in Detroit the the the, uh, the Motown uh, phenomenon, which was all about music and. Uh, I've got enough videos on that. We're just going to run through this. If you want more detail, you have to look into it. Uh, but to amuse, amusement park, <clears throat> which is all about recreation and wrecking creation. So many people die um, at amusement parks every year. They're swept under the rug. Uh, but uh, amuse and amusement and music all have the root word within it of muse. Muse, what is a muse? A muse is a spirit uh, that was used to give ideas to those that played instruments. And so the term music came later because this, <laughs> the, the, muse, the muse themselves would be sick. Like all spirits and extra dimensional beings who you let into this dimension, uh, under the guise that they're going to help you do something, that they're going to take you up like a starship, or that they're going to shoot you up, baby, like your private joy. Uh, the muse is sick, and so therefore it its job, like all of the other workers of the evil one of the adversaries, to kill, steal, and destroy. So you find uh, many tales of your great musicians of, of ancient times and, and your great classical musicians uh, being mad, meaning crazy, losing their minds. So why is technology so anti-environment? Well, again, it comes back to the fact that uh, technology as we know it really comes from the fallen angels. And it's not so much technology as it is technology. So now let's show and prove. Now, uh, again, the spirit of Detroit, you know, uh, Detroit is known for Motown and Detroit is known for uh, the cars that it makes, but it's also, unfortunately, it's known for being a consistent murder capital in one of the highest crime areas uh, in New Babylon, in America. And that has to do with the enemy's Plan A attack. That's the Alpha attack, which is the violence spirit. And this does indeed plug into the MK Ultra in the hood because the violent spirit, by and large, possesses the young brothers and sisters. Uh, young brothers and sisters in the hood, but it really grips my nephews, the young brothers who um, who believe that those who have this spirit are the alpha males in the hood. And it's been that way for some time. The hardest, the most raw individual, that is who uh, people tend to look up to and respect. And that's part of Lucifer's plan A. Because that same respect that you give that person or really the spirit that's over that person, you end up giving to Lucifer. You don't mean to, but that's what ends up happening. It's the way that this spirit game works because it's truly the spirit that's inside of them that you end up looking up to. You don't realize it. That's why so many brothers act the same, wear the same clothes, have the same slang, the same demeanor, the same personality because it's the same spirit. One spirit, like your example in Agent Smith, can possess a multitude of individuals. One spirit can hop in four or five people in the room. <clears throat> so, let's, maybe we should start um, on this side and then work our way over. That's how we do it. And, and we will find out why is technology anti-environment by the time we get uh, about a few lines down. Now, this is some serious business. Squall, now, squall, that's, a, that's a, a, a term a lot of folks say in Detroit, and for some time, you know, the uh, the hip-hop community in Detroit was trying to find its identity and was uh, trying to uh, do it by using a, a catchphrase or slang words that were known only to Detroit, and it was just a, a couple that hadn't been taken, uh, and Squo began to be beaten to the ground <laughs> because brothers really couldn't think on what what were some other ones that were uniquely Detroit. But Squo comes from square business. And square business is a Masonic slang derivative term. Some of the slang terms that we use, watch your back, for instance, uh, actually come from terminology that people in the brotherhood use one to another. 
and the serious business that we're talking about here. We're talking about Sirius, the dog star, uh, where it is believed that the serpentine race um, calls home, <clears throat> or at least the, the, the deceptive uh, interdimensional extraterrestrial terra astral beings uh, get down and get busy at. And they brought it down to the Dogon tribe, who said, who, who described them as the fish-headed ones. So uh, we're talking probably about reptilians, and by no coincidence, the spirit of Detroit, when you look at it, it's green. <clears throat> and people will say, well, it's green for this, it's green for that. I say, I maintain what uh, my research and what my feeble mind uh, always points to is, is, is the simplest thing, because I'm kind of simple. And it's green because it's to represent the serpentine. So here in uh, Detroit City, you, you find the birth of America's or you find the, uh, the apex of America's industrial age and nuclear age uh, culminating uh, one with another. The automobile, which is the number one depleter of natural resources to build a car, to build one car, takes so many resources, resources from the earth <laughs> and researchers, too. But uh, it takes so many resources and depletes the earth of so many uh, precious metals and minerals to create one car, one vehicle. And some people throw them, you know, smash them up, throw them in the gutter and go by another. But uh, we should, you know, as we think about recycling things, we should think about all of the garbage that we throw away and the way that it uh, does not uh, become a biodegradable <clears throat> a source of replenishing the earth, but instead it does uh, become an eyesore. In Detroit, a lot of the eyesores that people always show y'all, and let me tell you, a person born and raised in Detroit, some of them places I ain't never seen because they didn't go to the hood and places where people live. They went, you know, largely places where didn't nobody never live and in the industrial sections of town. But uh, you find in those pictures of, of the destruction porn and whatnot, you find a lot of discarded technology because technology is not made to be biodegradable and return to the earth. It is actually made to poison the earth, the things left behind by technology. So we have the Ford family, who's by and large uh, the biggest, arguably, the big-time Illuminati family in Detroit, the big shot callers. But there's a few, believe it or not. But the Ford family is notorious, and look at, look at Daddy Ford. You know, just just you know, do yourself a little favor and and you know, just amuse me, and check him out. Look at the old school picture. I'm talking. I ain't talking about uh, uh, the the Ford that you see at the Lions game. I'm talking about the dead and gone, real deal Henry Ford. Look at this picture. He looks like a cold piece. I'm telling you, he, the vampirism in his face is undeniable to me. It's all in his countenance, but. The Ford family runs uh, not as n not so much Detroit as the suburb that pumps a lot of money here, and that suburb is Dearborn, and Dearborn means born of a deer. <laughs> okay, uh, native born, uh, airborne, born of the air, Dearborn, born of a deer, and this has to do, uh, you know, in in all of your occult beliefs, <clears throat> this uh, relates back to ancient practices of bestiality, and even beyond that, uh, uh, things align with your rosemary baby type of concepts. You know, what was done to create this man uh, who had this grandiose idea that would do a great number of uh, to, to, to help to destroy the earth, to help to destroy creation, uh, was he indeed born of a woman? And uh, <clears throat> you may not believe it, but you don't have to be. <laughs> okay? Uh, we are told certain things about zoology and genetics that really um, aren't entirely true and it takes some of some overstanding of cryptozoology and of fringe genetics to and the book of Jasher to really get the picture. The fallen angel not only put the mix and match on us as human beings in Genesis six when they began to mate with man, 
but they also put the mix and match down on all of creation. The book of Jasher and the book of Enoch talks about that. They came down and they really put a mash down on creation as it is. Now, Dearborn is also known for something else. Dearborn is the um, city where you find the big prominent mall in the Detroit area. The one in Detroit is it looks like a ghost town now, like um, some parts of Detroit do. The, the North North Lawn, Northland, but um, uh, uh, Fairlane <coughs> is uh, more affluent and uh, services the suburbs more, and uh, you know people with more money and and um, better status tend to try to go to Fairlane, and Fairlane means a fair lane or a good lane, and if you look down the uh, if you look down Grand River Avenue. You can see clear from Dearborn down to the GM building uh, or the Renaissance building. And uh, all, all of these things are connected because there was a Masonic design to this city and a Masonic plan for it. And it also was a part of Aleister Crowley's uh, great, <clears throat> great work and design for the, the United States. He was not only a man that designed rituals for the 33rd degree, but he also gave inspiration to um, all sorts of um, um, heads of state and uh, dignitaries, and he gave quite an endorsement to Detroit um, as he wanted to, be, to become the aeon of the new age. And indeed, in some respects, it was. And this is what you see in the Robocop movies in the uh, old Detroit, new Detroit. It's very Masonic and symbolic of the uh, the uh, birth uh, um, and uh, of the death and rebirth ritual that you find in um, lodges worldwide. <coughs> so uh, Grand River puts you in mind of, 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 of Fair Lane. Uh, and Dearborn, these are all words that are uh, surrounding the the phenomenon of Detroit industry and the Ford family. Now, the, and the, the the team that they own is the Detroit Lions, and we know that the lion is a very key symbol uh, in religious mythology. You have the Lion of Judah to represent Yeshua, and you have the devil who... Uh, is as or like a roaring lion. He's not the thing, but he's like or as the thing because he's a perpetrator. And uh, even the word lion in Hebrew, Ari, backward is Yira, and uh, backward it means fear. So the Ford family is a feared family. And uh, Brother Jay said, the symbol of your car inscribed on a scroll. And, uh, you know, that was one of those cryptic lyrics that he had. It took me years to overstand. But, again, if you look at the symbols on the cars, you will also get more evidence as to the occult involvement in the creation of the car, the fallen angel tech or trick or trek or tracknology, <clears throat> because these these uh, pieces of technology and machinery are used for a number of things, and one thing that has always been used for is to track you. Star Trek, a Star Trek, Star Tech, Star Track, and the track phone uh, that a lot, a lot of folks have got uh, in order to think that they cheat in the game or cheat in the system some, some type of way. Uh, you know, they named it flat out the track phone, and some people just go ahead and call it the Obesi phone. And if you don't think that's being used to track you, you're a new fool. So technology comes from tricknology. <clears throat> you find some of these same names that you find in the stars on the cars. And um, you find them on other pieces of so-called technology, too. Not only did they give us the car, but they gave us the GAT. And you have the Taurus car, uh, the Taurus gun, and you have the Magnum car and the Magnum gun. And Magnum is very... Um, <laughs> Very interesting because you have the Magnum car, you have the Magnum gun. You may go into the party store with your Magnum gun on your hip after you hop out of your Magnum car and go buy you a pack of Magnums and then a 40 ounce of Magnum. And Magnum, you know, we know where you get magnificent and magnifique and all of that. It's a, it's a, uh, it's like the highest plateau <coughs> or, or, or um, in Latin word that alludes to a high, high plateau. And um, 
each one of those things is supposed to be on status, you know, some of the best of the best uh, at doing the job, whatever the job is, for each one of those magnum things. That magnum brewski, although uh, even when I was drinking the malt liquor, that wasn't one I would mess with. It had an awful bit of taste, but everyone knew it would put you on your bizzack. But uh, so technology comes from tricknology because the, the, the uh, spelling spell test that we did before and the way we looked at the spell of spelling <clears throat> and um, the curse of curses, we understood it's about the hard sounds. And so technology and tricknology have the same uh, root and origin. And it has to do with the manipulation of natural resources, silicon, plasma, uh, ankh, and other sacred geom geometric shapes, precious metals and materials, poisonous residue, all, small carcinogens, non-biodegradable residue. All of these things are found from your tech or tricknology. And when I first joined the nation and people said tricknology, it just it sounded slick to me, but I, no one had broke it down to me. Well, how can it be tricknology if the word is technology? But if you can just look at those words for yourself, we don't even have to explain it. It's plausible even if you need to look at it uh, again. But you can see the relationship between the hard sounds in the front and the hard sounds in the back, especially with trick, track, and track. Same thing, just like I showed with blunt, bland, blonde, you know, blend. Uh, so why is technology anti-environment? Because it was given to us by the fallen who are anti-environment, anti-creation, anti-human. The idea is to rebuild society after expediting its destruction. That's chaos out of order. Rebirth, which begins with death. The rebirth was the name of the last Dilla album that dropped. Dilla from Detroit being the pride of Detroit hip-hop. And also Rebirth is the uh, English translation for the name of the building, the iconic building that every time you see something about Detroit, you see that building uh, with those cylindrical buildings there, the same building that's on the back of the file bill when you fold it. That building is, was, was always called the Renaissance when I was growing up. It wasn't until, you know, I really want to say like the last decade or so when they changed it to the GM building. And, I, and I don't quote me on that because it, it, it might have been longer than that. But, you know, when you grow up with something, it, it just seems like such a long time. Um, and it's been such a short time that it's been called the GM building. <clears throat> but it was always called the Renaissance, and people still call it the Renaissance uh, that's from here. That it kind of um, uh, helped give evidence to somebody who's really from here and somebody be faking the funk because, you know, People do that for some reason. They, they, you know, they want to be from Detroit and then they want to talk down on Detroit at the same time. But, you know, they think it's cool to say they're from here even if they live 20 miles away. Uh, Kid Rock is doing that, at, um, and and I didn't mean to pick on him because now, I, you know, I, I, some some in some ways I regret it because I'm starting to understand more that he too is a victim. And yes, he he was a willing participant up to a certain point, but uh, when you're in that mind control program and you did not expect to be, how do you get out? It's very gangster and mobster. They're not going to just let you out. But again, I digress. So the rebirth happens, and rebirth begins with death. You cannot be reborn until first you die. So again, that had to do with the death of the city, the financial death of the city, the economic death of the city, the bankruptcy of Detroit, the phoenix, the rising again from the ashes, which is on the original great seal of the United States, and Atlantis, which is what um, great Masonic writers, and when I say great, I mean revered, Masonic writers like your boy Manly P. Hall, um, 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 Pike, and others like to compare the great work to or the creation of a new America to uh, the creation of a new Atlantis or, or a rising again of Atlantis <clears throat> and the Isley song too. Uh, so we know that Lucifer, who is masquerading as many different names from many different cultures, but I like to use the Latin for light bearer because it's the light, that false light, like the, like the false light that's lighting this page, not the, not the real light of the sun, the S-U-N, the S-O-N, but truly the false light and a created light, a light created by technology, if you will, tricknology. And so Lucifer means light bearer, and I like to use that term, but Lucifer is called many things. He's called the prince of this world, the god of this age. He's out to kill, steal, and destroy. He is the destroyer, not the creator, so he must destroy civilization. 
but he is also called the prince of the power of the air, which is, which relates to harp, which he uses to perpetrate like he controls weather. And, and uh, uh, he's also represented by all 12 of the signs, but the Ephesians 2 and 2, prince power of the air, directly alludes to the 2 and 2, the duality, the double-double, the fact that he also is about the double-mindedness exhibited uh, or told to us in James 1 and 8, which makes you unstable in all your ways. He's truly unstable, and he uses his harp to uh, uh, destabilize the weather, and his personality is unstable, and his patron uh, signature sign, when in that personality is that of the Gemini. Gemini is also called the messenger, and it is across the power of the air that these messages come. Your messages come to your phone by way of the power of the air, whether it be a phone call or a text. The messages come into your TV or into your satellite dish by way of the power of the air, your cable by way of the power of the air, your Wi-Fi, power of the air. So this is why sometimes he is shown uh, the one of his symbols <clears throat> could be a flash or a bolt of lightning. And flash, super fast, is nothing but an allegory or a metaphor for uh, Lucifer as Hermes or Mercury, who is the lightning fast messenger of the gods uh, in a Greco Roman mythology. So Flash is nothing but another representation of Lucifer. He's got so many ways to hide. And that lightning bolt is the same lightning bolt you see on what record album? The Zap Records. Computer love. So he must destroy civilization. We're going to kick it just a little taste. we got about four minutes. I think we'll get it all in. So <clears throat> your main in inventions. Look at all these inventions. Your main inventions. Radio. Video games. TV, movies, telephone, the internet, which of course is uh, nothing without a computer. So each one of these things, uh, the radio, it's disputed, but Marconi <clears throat> is given credit uh, uh, for the final draft that became the radio. And then you have uh, movies. The movies will show and prove to you, especially that you, you will find um, horror movies or supernatural stories surrounding certain technology. Each one of these pieces of technology has a horror movie, at least one, or some sort of supernatural tale surrounding this invention. And it's because each one of these inventions was invented for seeing, hearing, watching or manipulating or talking to the spirits, each and every one, each one you see. So that's if we run out of time, so you'll already know that. Each one you see. Uh, Marconi, uh, like I said, credited for it, but it's in dispute because sometimes, especially back in those days, it took several parts to create this one creation. But the movie Frequency plays off of that, Ephesians 2 and 2. The Think about the rotation or the mind control of repetition of radio. Uh, R.J. Reynolds and Reynolds rap. Now, it's interesting. People say, you know, about uh, conspiracy theorists or truthers, they say, oh, yeah, they wear them tinfoil hats. And R.J. Reynolds uh, revolutionized what we know today as tinfoil. And ironically, tinfoil hats would be used to do what? Protect you from the prince of the power of the air. So it might not be so silly to stuff the inside of your can't go. But, it, but uh, I digress. And Reynolds rap used to have right on the package the little triangle, the little pyramid, used to say uh, since 1945, and that's just by memory, if memory serves me correctly. But it was uh, in my spirit, and and all, all of the research that I had read pointed to the fact that Roswell, technology found during Roswell, helped bring us the uh, tin foil that we know today. And what they found there was a piece of metal that you could ball up with your hand, and when you released your hand, the metal unballed itself. <clears throat> Video games, the number one company, Rockstar, of course, uh, Grand Theft Auto, State of Emergency, um, uh, first-person shooters, MK, and occult names and characters all throughout video games. Uh, movies or cinema or sin-e-ma or sin-ma, mother of sin. 
Lucifer in full effect as the feminine principle as the feminine principle. Uh, that's why movie starlets are bigger than than the actors themselves, movie stars. MK subliminals, inserts between frames, the telephone, jail cell, the cell phone, bondage, the all seeing iPhone, the enter the net, the cursor, the www, six 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 in Hebrew, the web, 